Should you buy prism or optic sports cards? For many collectors of basketball and football cards, those are the two biggest mid-tier brands in the market. In today's video, we're going to compare them head to head and answer a big question. What is the best brand of the two that you should buy for a long-term hold? So Prism and Optic are two of the biggest brands in sports cards and particularly at that mid-tier price point. They're fun products because when you buy a box of either one of them, you're getting to open several packs and you have several different chances at getting a big card. Unlike a box such as National Treasures where you only have one pack of a few cards, Prism has 12 packs of 12 cards and Optic usually has 20 packs of 4 cards. In the end, you're left with quite a few cards and the colored parallels can be worth quite a bit of money. But which one is the best of the two? I came up with five different categories in which we're going to put the two brands head to head. Entry price, legacy, scarcity, current value, and long-term potential. Let's start right at the top looking at the entry price. When it comes to entry price, there's two different things we want to compare. Singles, as in buying just straight rookie cards, and then boxes, which are buying boxes to hold long-term. Let's start with just one sport in one year. We'll look at 2020 football just for the sake of this comparison. Obviously, the boxes and singles are going to be priced different across years, but just for the sake of comparing Optic and Prism, doing the same year in the same sport should be enough to give us some grounds to make some assumptions on. So with 2020 football, I'm looking up the Optic Justin Herbert rookie in PSA 10. Now, there's some fun trivia, as you probably already know this, but with Prism, the silver cards are called Prism, and with Optic, they're called Hollow, standing for holographic. So a Hollow Optic card is the equivalent of a silver Prism. So I'm going down to Recent Cells, and we're going to filter this by Sold Items. The last sell was for $260, before that it was $225-ish, $230. So it looks like we're hovering right around on average about 235. Now we're going to do the same exact thing, but we're doing a silver prism. So here it is, $1,125 is the most recent sell. And then another for $1,125. That seems to be the going rate. So comparing the $235-ish dollar Optic Hollow with the Silver Prism, both PSA 10s, the Silver Prism is five times as expensive. So depending on your budget, you might consider buying into Optic over Prism just because they're a lot more affordable. When it comes to buy-in, Optic is our winner. All right, our second category is Legacy, and this one's an easy one. Prism is basically the grandfather of OptiChrome cards from Panini. It was first released in 2012, and Panini intended it as a way to improve upon all Chromium cards to date. The set hit and has been a fan favorite ever since. Here's a little bit more trivia for you. All the Prism refractors are called Prism cards because Topps had a trademark on the word refractor, so Panini called them Prisms. And yes, the Prism refractors are called Prism Prisms. That has trickled down into the other sets though, so if you get a holographic card from any of the other Prism sets, it's also called a Prism. If you look on the back of an Optic card that's an Optic Hollow, it says Prism on it. So yes, Prism cards really are the grandfather of all the Panini OptiChrome cards. Donner's Optic isn't even necessarily the parent of its own set. It's actually the Chromium spinoff of Donner's. And note that most people just call it Optic, but it's technically called Donner's Optic. In the same way, there is Contender's Optic, which is just the Chromium version of contenders. Still, Optic is a very good set, just like how Tops and Tops Chrome were dominant for many, many years for Tops. But head to head, this one's no match. When it comes to Legacy, Prism is the clear favorite. Numero 3. Scarcity. This one's pretty easy to check. We're going to use basketball since I used football as an example in the other one. We're going to look at the PSA population report and just see what has been graded the most. So this is the 2018 Prism set, which of course is the Luka Rookie and Trey and SGA and Jared Jack. There's a lot of people from the set, but we're particularly focusing on the Luka. So the Luka base Prism has been graded 36,000, almost 37,000 times. There's 20,000 base PSA 10. In the Silver Prism, it has been graded 5,000 times, and there are 2,000 PSA 10. So we're looking at a total of 36,000 base and 5,000 silver. Comparatively, Optic has a significantly smaller number. There are 13,000 that have been graded total, and it's about a third of that 37-ish thousand. So comparing Optic to Prism, you got about a third as many cards graded. That's really attractive. And when you look at the Hollow, there's only 951 total graded, and that's just 325 in a PSA 10. 
Comparing that to the 2200 Silver Prism, there's obviously significantly less supply of the Optic Hollow, which makes me think in the future demand could be a lot more. So when it comes to scarcity, Optic is the clear winner. Really fast before we get into the next one, big favor to ask. I've been paying attention to our YouTube channel analytics and only a very small percentage of the people who watch our videos actually subscribe to the channel. So we decided to do something about it. We're actually picking a lucky subscriber every Friday and sending them a free box of cards. So just hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and then ring the notification bell so you never miss another one of our videos and you might get something out of it. Thanks for following. Next up is current value and we kind of already answered this when we looked at Justin Herbert earlier. If you're trying to buy a single rookie card, the Prism is about five times more expensive than the Optic. What about the boxes though? Do they line up with that? So a 2020 Prism football hobby box sold for $1,753 and a Optic hobby box of the same year sold for $1,425. This tells a lot different story than the singles and it makes me think that either the Prism boxes are being significantly undervalued or the Optic boxes are being overvalued. Please comment below which one you think is the case. Either way, just operating based on the price of the Silver Prism rookie card, when it comes to value, Prism's the clear favorite. So it all comes down to this, number five, long-term potential, and of course, that is the hardest one to quantify. I have two different ways to look at it. When it comes to number three, scarcity, Optic is the clear favorite based on a little thing I like to know as the law of supply and demand. In very simple terms, having a lower population means there's going to be more demand and price should eventually swell to match that demand. That said, Prism has always been the golden boy of sports cards and it is five times more expensive than Optic now. I think over time Optic can close that gap, but I don't think it's ever going to overtake Prism and be the favorite product. So I'm gonna cop out. I'm going to say either one of them has good long-term potential. It's impossible to say which one the favorite will be. Optic will probably make up some ground, but as the favorite, Prism might continue to just stay the favorite and stay a ways ahead of the pack. So to conclude, I'm going to call it a draw. Both of these brands have their pros and cons, so just pick the one that aligns most with your budget and your preference. And either way, trust that if you're buying Optic or Prism, you're not making a mistake. Thanks for watching this video. Your support means a lot. Watch another one right up here. Click it. Pretty please. Thanks.